Spinophorosaurus and some other sauropodomorphs did not have reduced vestibular apparatuses, a sensory system for balance and orientation in the inner ear, though this might have been expected in a lineage that led to heavy, plant-eating quadrupeds. It is unknown why it retained this feature, but the size and morphology of sauropodomorph labyrinths may be related to neck length and mobility. Roedosaurus was the first sauropod dinosaur discovered in Australia, and for a long time it was one of only two sauropods, the other being Ostrosaurus, known to have come from there. The neck length of the Shunosaurus indicates that it was a low browser. It was disclosed that the tail ended in a club, equipped on its top with two successive spikes formed by five centimeters long cone-shaped osteoderms probably used to fend off enemies. Shunosaurus accounts for 90% of the fossils found in the Dashanpu fauna, showing it was a dominant and, or common member of its habitat and environment. Cetiosaurus was a primitive, quadrupedal, long-necked, small-headed herbivore. It had a shorter tail and neck than most sauropods. The environment in which it lived was floodplain and open woodland. Paleontologists considered it was a feeding generalist, eating at both a low and a medium-high level. Patagosaurus is one of the earliest sauropods known to have roamed South America, it was quite big for a mid-Jurassic era dinosaur, yet as was not as advanced as the sauropods that began appearing in the late Jurassic. The center of gravity for Joberia was nearer the rear legs, something that has gone on to speculation about Joberia being able to rear up its hind legs so that it could reach higher vegetation. Omasaurus lived in dense forest, the large number of individuals recovered indicates that it was a successful design that was well suited to its environment. With its incredibly long neck, it both a relative and possible contemporize to the more famous Mementosaurus. With 19 vertebrae, the neck of Mementosaurus was just as long its body and tail combined. Such a long neck is thought to have been to enable it to sweep its neck across a wide area of vegetation without having to physically walk to constantly find new areas. This means that once it arrived at a suitable location it could quite possibly be able to feed for several hours without having to expend unnecessary energy. Some paleontologists have guessed that it would have taken 1,200 pounds of food a day to keep this dinosaur alive. The tip of the tail where the vertebra was more robust with taller neural spines. Current thinking for this construction is that the tip of the tail was modified to be a weapon. Such a weapon may have been used in dominance competition between two males, although it is not inconceivable that it could have been turned against an attacking predator. Shinjungtitan shares several derived characters with diplodocids, including prominent ambience process of pubis, relatively short hind limb and fourth trochanter on the femur that is cotomedially developed. One of the most notable details of Ribosciosaurus are the tall neural spines of the vertebrae, which either stood proud from the back, or supported a sail or hump that ran along the spine. Aside from this it was a fairly generic diplodocid sauropod with a large build, long neck and whip-like tail. Nigrosaurus was a very specialized sauropod, evolved for feeding as a low browser. To accomplish this, the skull was shaped so that the jaws formed a very broad, flat edge across the front maximizing the amount of vegetation gathered in a single bite.
The key explanation for the short neck of Brachytrichella pan is that it must have evolved to fill a niche in the late Jurassic ecosystems of South America that was not being filled by other dinosaurs, specifically ornithopod dinosaurs such as Iguanodon that are were common in other parts of the world or largely unknown from South America. For protection, Amargosaurus had two rows of spines that grew out of its neck, back and tail. Some paleontologists have postulated that this dinosaur may have actually had a sail that grew out of its back. Paleontologists also believe that these dinosaurs may have traveled in herds. Bajatosaurus also sported bifurcated, extremely elongated neural spines extending from the neck vertebrae, they could have served as passive defense against predators. Its eye openings were exposed in top view of the skull, possibly allowing the animal to look forwards while feeding. Decreosaurus was herbivorous, like all sauropods, however, it didn't compete with other dinosaurs for vegetation. The rocks where it has been found also yield fossils of Giraffatitan and Kentrosaurus. As there was a distinct difference in size between these animals, they would probably have browsed for vegetation at different levels, allowing them to co-exist without significant competition. It was named for the spines on the back of the neck. Amphicelias is a contender for possibly the biggest dinosaur ever known, unfortunately neither of its bones is available for study because they have mysteriously disappeared, either mislaid away from lack of preservation techniques being applied to confirm its size. Computer simulations have concluded that Apatosaurus could move their tails like bull whips, meaning that they could make a cracking sound with them by whipping them at high velocity. These computer simulations have estimated that if these dinosaurs could indeed crack their massive tails, then it would have been louder than the firing of a cannon. It would have been useless however, as a weapon and most likely would have been used for other purposes, maybe communication. After many controversies about the validation of the Brontosaurus, paleontologists finally separated it from Apatosaurus in 2015, making it a valid genus. Their early found remains were actually the same type of dinosaur, but new studies show they were related but two different genus. As the archetypal sauropod, it is one of the best known dinosaurs and has been featured in many old movies. Supersaurus was exceptionally large, even for the type of dinosaur that the genus represents, while the diplodocids were massive sauropods, they were relatively slender. They had short legs, making them the dachshund of giant dinosaurs, and their rear legs were longer than front legs, giving their back a distinctive downward slope towards the neck. However, they may not have been able to lift their necks like other sauropods. It is believed that Diplodocus didn't have the necessary teeth to properly chew tree branches, so it has been theorized that the diet of these herbivores must have consisted entirely of leaves, ferns and moss. It is also believed that these leaves were then allowed to ferment in these animals' extended belly until it was broken down enough for the nutrients to be extracted and used by the animal. Scientists have debated as to how sauropods were able to breathe with their large body sizes and long necks, which would have increased the amount of dead space. They likely had an avian respiratory system, which is more efficient than a mammalian and reptilian system. Fossils of Cotodocus were first recovered in 1934 and subsequently assigned to the genus Barosaurus. Later study of the fossils revealed them to actually represent a distinct genus of Diplodocid. The restriction in vertical flexibility suggests that Barosaurus could not feed on vegetation that was high off the ground. It was an enormous animal, with some adults measuring more than 26 meters in length and weighing more than 20 metric tons. <laughs> <laughs>